So I think the word transitory has different meanings to different people. To, to many, it carries a time, a sense of, uh, of short-lived. We, we tend to, 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 to ha use it to mean that, that it won't leave a permanent mark uh, in, the, in the form of higher inflation. I think it's, it's probably a good time to retire that, that uh, word and try to explain more clearly what we mean. Retiring the word transitory when it comes to inflation. Of course, a lot of Americans out there around the country uh, would have already been ahead of Jay Powell there in saying they've noticed inflation taking place for quite some time, whether you look at gas prices right now and filling up the tank up by about 50% year over year to food prices, energy prices at home, everything across the board seemingly more expensive. And for more on that, I want to bring on Yahoo Finance's Vera Gibbons, Yahoo Finance contributor, who's been tracking this for us and talking with consumers out there about what they're seeing and how they're trying to fight back against it. Vera. Well, you know, one consumer I spoke to said that when gas prices, you know, hit, it was costing her $60 to fill up her car, she started to take drastic measures to try to save more and spend less. So she is now driving for Lyft at 45 years old. She now has taken in a roommate. She bought a space heater because she's anticipating a very expensive winter. She's shopping more strategically at the grocery stores. She's making all sorts of changes to try to weather the storm. Her take is that this isn't transitory. You know, that we're up against the, the ra most rapid increase in prices we've seen in 31 years, if you look at the annual rate of inflation. And while initially it was limited just to um, pandemic disrupted categories, used cars, technology, electronics, it is widespread and it's accelerating at a very disturbing pace, particularly at the pump, that when you see the gas prices are up nearly 50%, that really inspires people to make these drastic changes so that they can, they can do better. And Vera, when we think about inflation and its causes, as you wrote in your notes to us today, you said it can come from three sources, a rapid increase in demand or limited supply or consumer psychology. But in fact, we kind of have all three here running at the same time, don't we? Yes, this is what an economist from Moody's was telling me that, first of all, inflation has been dormant for some time, so we've forgotten what it's actually like. Also, inflation is usually driven by one of three, three, three things, as you pointed out, lack of supply, an increase in demand, or consumer psychology. The problem is we have a convergence of all three factors happening simultaneously. So it's very different from previous bouts of inflation that we've experienced. And the problem is that the more psyched out that consumers get or the more anxious they get about inflation, you know, they're, they're, they're stockpiling, they're doing all sorts of crazy things to try to uh, deal with inflation, to manage the runaway inflation, that sort of exacerbates the situation and prolongs the inflationary period. Yeah, we talk about when we might get back to normal. Of course, you know, the Biden administration, uh, Biden administration has been working hard on kind of alleviating some of those supply issues. We've heard from Jay Powell talking about how those were not something that they originally forecast because uh, they didn't see that coming. Of course, they knew the demand might be uh, an inflationary uh, piece of the puzzle, but maybe didn't see the supply issues. And he has a forecast of maybe some of this keeping up until mid next year. So, I mean, if you're an American out there who's now paying more for all this, it doesn't necessarily sound great to think, uh-oh, things might be more costly for a while. It doesn't sound great. I mean, some of the policymakers and some of the economists said initially that, you know, things would level off by the end of the year. Well, we are at the end of the year and things haven't leveled off. In fact, inflation is now at a point where it's actually runaway inflation. So some of the economists that I spoke to said that in the near term, expect price increases to actually continue, which is why we'll see more American consumers sort of hunker down, sort of buckle down in their spending and try to save more. Uh, but in terms of when things will actually settle down, that's all over the map. I've heard 2022, 2023, 2024. And of course, this variant throws a monkey wrench into any, even the best projections. Yeah, and it seems like we're going to be talking about this for some time. Vera Gibbons, Yahoo Finance contributor, appreciate your time here.